Good morning. And welcome to St. Matthew's Episcopal Church on this third Sunday after Pentecost. Our opening hymn this morning is number 525, found in the blue hymnal just in front of you. 525. Please stand as you are able. Our service of Holy Eucharist this morning can be found almost entirely in your worship booklet. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
collect and the readings can be found in this smaller insert in your worship booklet and also on the screen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of scripture. A reading from Kings. Now when the Lord was about to take, up, take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they were both standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other, until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted to you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them into two pieces. He picked up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. He took the mantle of Elijah and s that had fallen from him and struck the water, saying, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? When he had struck the water, the water was parted to the one side and to the other, and Elisha went over. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Pointed psalm is Psalm 77, found in your insert or on the screen. We'll read it in unison. I will cry out to the God. God. I, will I will cry, cry aloud, and, and he, he will hear me. me. In, In the day, day of my, my trouble, trouble, I sought, sought the Lord. Lord. My, my hands were stretched out by night, and, and he did not tire. He I refused to be comforted. comforted. I, I remember, remember the works of the Lord, Lord and call to mind your, your wonders of old time. time. I, will I will meditate on all your acts and ponder your mighty deeds. Your, Your way, way O oh God, God, is holy. Is holy. Who is so great a God as, God as our, our God? You are, the, are God the God who works wonders and have declared, declared your power, your power among, among the peoples. The peoples. By your strength, strength you have redeemed your people, your people the children of Jacob and Joseph. The waters, the waters saw you, O oh God. God. The waters saw you and trembled. And trembled. The very the depths, depths were shaken. shaken. The clouds poured out water, the skies thundered, your arrows flashed to and fro. The sound of your thunder was in the whirlwind, your lightnings lit up the world. The earth trembled and shook, your way was in the sea, and your paths in the great waters. Yet your footsteps were not seen. You led your people like a flock by, by the, the hand, hand of, of Moses, Moses and, and Aaron. Aaron.
A reading from Galatians. For the freedom of Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters, only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of flesh are obvious, fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I'm warning you, as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified, have crucified the flesh with its own passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel hymn this morning is number 458, found in the blue hymnal in front of you, 458. Please stand as you are able. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. 
and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. But they did not receive him, because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. This is the gospel of our Lord. I have two sermons this morning, one for the kids and one for everyone else. Depends on what category you put yourself. (laughs) So I'd like for all the children who might be dispersed around the congregation to come forward and sit toward the front. They can sit with the rest. And to the rest of you, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. We we all good? Everybody got a spot? So first I want to tell you all, I am not a very good joke teller. Until the other day, I only had one joke that I could tell and remember the punchline or say it in any organized way. But, um, but my grandson told me a joke, and I thought, it has nothing to do with my sermon. But I, <laughs> just let me just put that out there. But uh, I thought it was good, so I think I'll share it with you today. So there was a man who died, and he went to heaven, and St. Peter was there at the pearly gates, And the man came in, you know, it's a new place, and he's kind of checking it out, and he says to St. Peter, so what are all these clocks for? The place was filled with clocks. And St. Peter said to him, well, the clocks tell when you have lied. So the hands on the clocks will move according to how many lies you've told in your lifetime. And you know, a while back, a guy named George Washington came in here, and he didn't tell any lies in his lifetime, so his hands on his clock didn't move. But this morning, a woman came, and she had told two lies, and so her hands are moving a little bit. And the man said, well, where is my clock? And St. Peter said, well, Jesus keeps it in his office. He's using it for a ceiling fan. (laughs) I didn't blow it. I did blow it. Uh, Anyway. Okay, so as I said, I have two sermons. The first one is for our kids. and I want to talk to you for a second about camping. Um, When Scott and I were first married, we went on a camping trip to the mountains of Alabama. Have you ever been camping in the mountains, any of you guys? Have you? Yeah. So what kinds of things do you need if you're planning to go camping? What do you need to take with you? None. Sunscreen and bug spray, first thing first. What? Shelter? Yes, a tent or something, right? Yeah. What else do you take with you? Isaac. Food and water. What else? Abby. Supplies. 
You need things to cook with and things to eat with and all of that. Nyla, what else? Extra clothes, maybe a sleeping bag or two, right? If we're sleeping on the ground, we might want a little pad under us. Okay, so, you know, it's kind of rough in it, isn't it? It's not like being home with your own pillow and your own blankets and your comfy bed. Um, and so I remember this camping trip, it's the first camping trip that Scott and I ever took together. And we arrived at the campsite after dark which was not a good decision, but things held us up, and so we got there after dark. And um, shortly after we got there, it started to rain. And at first it was just a sprinkle. And so we set up our tent to be ready to have shelter, have a place where we could, we could go and get out of the rain. So we set up the tent, and we laid out our sleeping bags in there. Now a good Girl Scout knows you don't open up your sleeping bags until you are ready to get in, right? Well, no, we rolled them out. We made a nice little place for ourselves in the tent and it kept raining and raining like it can only do in Alabama. And so I abandoned ship and I went to the car. <laughs> and Scott went over to our tent and he looked inside, he lifted up the flap and he looked in, and here I am in the car, and all I saw was... <laughs> and I thought, uh-oh. That was a sign we might have been in trouble. Our sleeping bags were floating in the water that was in our tent. <laughs> so at a break in the rain, which didn't last too long, we gathered up our sleeping bags and our tent, and we headed into a town to go to the laundromat and throw everything in the dryer and try to get it dried up so that we could, you know, the smart thing would have been, hey, let's stay in a hotel. But back in those days, we didn't have the money to stay in a hotel. We had our camping stuff and that's what we intended to do. So we dried all of our stuff. It took a really long time for that stuff to dry. We went back to the campsite. We set everything back up. And since we couldn't use, uh, we couldn't build a fire inside of our tent, we couldn't use a camp stove inside the tent, we decided, you know, we might as well go to sleep because what else was there to do? So we, we spread out our now dry sleeping bags in the tent. And you know, I gotta tell you, I really missed my pillow. I can remember it still. And that ground was not very soft. Finally, I fell asleep, but soon I was awakened by rain, water, dripping on my head. The, the rain was leaking through the tent, and we hadn't dug a ditch, and so we, we were going to be in trouble. All night long, we had to deal with this rain dripping. And so, finally, we did get some sleep, and finally, at long last, we could see the sun was coming up. We could see some light through the windows of the tent. We decided it was time to get up. And so we got up and we grabbed our fishing gear and we thought we'd go down to the lake and catch some fish for our lunch. Well, since we'd arrived in the dark, we didn't know what our surroundings were, were looked like because it was pitch black. What we saw when we looked for the lake, was a mud hole. A giant mud hole where they had drained the lake and there was a massive bulldozer sitting in the middle of that mud. I don't know if it was stuck or if they were gonna come back and use it. But anyway, I turned to Scott and I said, let's just pack up. I've had all the fun that I can bear right now. Well, I learned my lesson. The next time we went into the mountains, we stayed in a nice cabin with running water, hot and cold running water, a stove, a refrigerator, a microwave, a TV with a built-in VCR, and an outlet to plug in my hair dryer. That's my idea of roughing it. That was rough. Now, one day, Jesus was walking along the road with some disciples, and one of them said to him, Lord, I'll follow you wherever you go. 
And Jesus turned to him and said, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Jesus was trying to make his disciples understand that it wasn't always going to be easy to follow him. There would be rough times, sometimes even worse than our camping trip. If some of Jesus' followers were willing to follow Jesus as long as it was easy. But when things got hard, they decided it was time to pack up and go home. Jesus has called us to take up our cross and follow him. Sometimes it won't be easy. Sometimes people will make fun of you. Some people will hate you. Will we follow him when the going gets rough? Or will we pack up and go home? Something to think about, isn't it? Let's pray. Dear Jesus, you have called us to follow you. Help us to follow, even when the going gets rough. Amen. Okay. So just like the adults were listening in when I was telling you this story, you can listen in too for this next part. About a week ago, a transformer blew in Aspen, where my daughter Brooke lives, and she was without power for just about 24 hours, not a terribly long time, but 24 hours. Um, but Nick's had COVID, and so I became terribly worried. What, what if the battery ran out on her phone? What if, what if they needed me? How would I know? What would I do anyway? I live three and a half hours away. How would I really be able to do anything? Now, we've all experienced power outages. She did what any good mom would do. She lit candles, and they ate out of the refrigerator, being unable to cook anything, and then they went to bed early. Sounds like a lovely evening to me. But I'm always surprised by how challenging I find it to navigate everyday activities because I feel lost without access to the internet or, once again, what if I run out of battery on my phone? Oh my gosh. Actually, I'm not surprised by that. I'm just a little bit embarrassed by it that I have grown so accustomed to these devices, to computers and phones, cell phones and iPads and watches and all kinds of things that I find it unsettling when I have that taken away from me abruptly. All of which reminds me how much I, and I suspect some of you, find the experience of being out of control so unsettling, so unsettling. Whether it's power outages or storms or illness, sudden death of a loved one, or job loss, all kinds of things unsettle our plans and wrest control from us. And that's deeply troubling, more so for some than others. And maybe that's why we work so hard to keep control of those things that seem under our power. And maybe to move to this week's gospel reading, this also explains some of the reactions to Jesus' resolute journey to the cross. There are three sets of reactions worth noting, I think, in this scripture reading. The first is that of the Samaritans, who recognize that Jesus has set his face to go to Jerusalem, and they will not receive him. They apparently recognize that Jesus is on a mission and they want nothing to do with that. Perhaps they believe that because Jesus is set on reaching Jerusalem, that he will have no time for them, no time to discuss or heal or whatever they may have hoped. In either case, they have expectations of Jesus that he is not meeting. And when his resolution 
to march toward the cross upsets their plans, they reject him. The disciples, in turn, react to this rejection with a surprising and, frankly, rather alarming request. They want to call down fire from heaven to devour the Samaritans. Well, perhaps it's not as surprising as we'd like to think. Jews and Samaritans did not get along. The disciples, too, were apparently not above ethnic prejudice. And they knew their biblical history well enough to know that in the chapter before what we heard this morning from Kings, in that chapter, Elijah does just that. He calls down fire to consume all these false prophets. So they think that this is what they need to do. They don't want to be thwarted in their plans. They were there to see that Jesus made it to Jerusalem, you see. And anyone who stood in their way with that could just go away. You know, talk about what happens when you feel out of control. Others have also made plans. Yes, they'll follow Jesus as soon as they bury their loved ones or made appropriate farewells. Reasonable, don't you think? I mean, wouldn't that be all of our responses or most of our responses? Like, first, I need to say goodbye to my family. I kind of need to let them know where I'm headed off to. Yet, Jesus expects them to drop all of their plans and follow him. Why? Because what he is doing makes a difference. And anyone who can't see that enough to allow their plans and schemes and hopes and dreams to be upset doesn't have what it takes to be a disciple. All of which brings me to an unsettling question. Does Jesus make a noticeable difference in our lives? Or to put it in other terms, does the grace, mercy, and love of God made incarnate in Jesus trump our plans and shape our lives? Or do we shape our faith to fit the lives that we've already planned? Which of those? If we're honest, I think many of us will identify with the latter option because we recognize that maybe not all of us, but some of us harbor a deep-seated desire to be in control, to maintain some semblance of order in a rather chaotic and confusing world. Yet Jesus in this passage is not willing to concede. He demands that his mission come before all other plans even those that seem most reasonable. Why? Because he knows that we really aren't in control, that it's an illusion, that a rainstorm or a tornado or an illness or a loss or a tra tragedy or any one of a hundred things might dash our hopes as well as our plans and bring us to ruin. And so he, he what? He invites us to give over control to him? Is that it? As tempting and as pious as that might sound, I'm not sure that the passage in front of us invites that choice of us being in control or Jesus being in control. I don't think that's what this passage is saying. Think about it. Jesus doesn't go to Jerusalem to assume command or take charge. This is why the Jews had such a hard time with seeing him as the Messiah. They expected a Messiah who was going to turn everything upside down, was going to throw out the Romans, was going to give back the land to the Israelites, just like had been promised to them years and years and years before. But Jesus 
doesn't do that. He doesn't take command. He doesn't take charge. Rather, he goes to Jerusalem to thrust himself fully and completely into our out-of-control lives and comes out on the other side. Comes out on the other side. So perhaps that's the promise of the gospel. Not that we can be in control or even that God is in control, but rather that God in Jesus joins us in our out-of-controlness holds on to us and brings us to the other side. That may not always seem like much of a promise, but after a day or so without power, or a few months of chemo, or several years of addiction, it at least sounds real and trustworthy. I mean, look around. We invest a lot of time and energy and money into being in control. It's important to us, and plenty of religious folk invite us to invest a lot of time, energy, and money to surrender to God's control. And yet, the world is still a chaotic and an unsettling place. So, What if the deepest calling of a disciple is not to be in control, ourselves or vicariously through God, but rather to give up the illusion, to take some risks, and to throw ourselves into the turbulent life and world that God loves so much, trusting that God will join us in the adventure? hold on to us through all the ups and downs and bring us safely to the other side. Maybe, just maybe, that's faith. And when we, like Jesus' first disciples, fall short yet again, then all we can do is give thanks that Jesus set his face to go to Jerusalem, not just with us, but for us, taking on our chaotic lot and joining us in our turbulent lives, that we may know that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing. Thanks be to God for this slim promise that when we're honest, changes lives. Amen. Let's take some time of silent prayer and reflection while you can think about remembering the joke. Please stand as you are able and let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, which is found in your worship booklet. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The praise of the people. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially our presiding bishop Michael, a diocesan bishop Kim, and the diocesan cycle of prayer. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacrament. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. We pray for our President Joe, our Governor Jared, our Mayor Jeff, and the leaders of Parker and Douglas County. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. We pray especially for Michael, Stephen, Anthony, Cindy, Margie, Kim, Tom, Bobby, Ryan, Laura, Brooke, James, Suzanne, Marina, Svetlana, Vasily, Terry, and Catherine. Are there others? Sunny, for Colin. We pray for all of those across the world who suffer from violence and oppression. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for us, for your saints who have entered into, glo in, in, entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Remain standing or kneel as you are able. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. 
Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of the Lord... Oh, did you want to say something? Oh. <laughs> May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Please extend a sign of peace to those around you. I'm sorry, I just heard a peep. <laughs> Please be seated, folks. Please be seated. Please be seated. Do I have a mic on? Can you all hear me? Yeah. Well, good morning. First of all, I would like to thank so many of you who wrote me or called me or saw me and wished me recovery. It was, it was a rough road, but I'm glad it's behind me. And there are several others, numerous others, people that I know who are contracting COVID right now. So, um, so we're in a little bit of a ramp up. We're not used to wearing our masks again, and some stores are requiring that. We don't have a requirement that you wear a mask here at St. Matthew's, but you might want to consider your own health. And, um, and if you need to protect yourself, then by all means, wear a mask. And if you have a sniffle, you think, oh, it's allergies, please stay home. <laughs> please stay home. Uh, anyway, so that's it. Thank you, and, um, and I thank you for all of those who have recovered. Thank God for all of those who have recovered and are now uh, ready to forge ahead in life without fear. Um, I want to mention to you, and I've not mentioned this in an announcement since I've been with you all, but there are people every Sunday that take the time to go and purchase goodies or bake them and bring them and set up for coffee hour. And we would love for you all to come and meet one another and have a little bit of coffee, strawberry maybe, or some something. We have coffee hour in the parish hall, down the hallway, though when it's less chilly, we're gonna be out in this courtyard as often as we can. So please do uh, try to join us for that. Another announcement comes from a vestry meeting that we had last week, and that is that we are trying to work on getting our grounds back in order. Um, as, you can, as you look around, you can see that there's lots of weeds and dead grass, and we had sprinkler system issues, and we think we've corrected all of that, and now fertilizing has been done, but you know, that stuff takes a little while. So, um, so we're working on it. But there is an area that probably most of you have never seen or haven't seen in a long time. And it's the area back there that everybody else in town sees because it's what fronts onto this uh, alley, which will soon be more of a road apparently, Pilgrim Place, Pilgrim's Place. Um, Behind Balcom House, our education building, and behind the office building, it's a disaster. It is not our best foot forward. And so we are looking to do something back there, some xeriscaping more than likely. As you know, a church doesn't have a lot of money for, um, for huge plantings, but not a lot of money to water all of that all summer long. So. Behind Balcom House, it was planned to be a prayer garden. And you can kind of tell that maybe that's what it was going to be, but it's not. And, uh, and back in front, uh, the other side of the office is, is disastrous as well. If anyone has any particular knowledge or skills about xeriscaping and has ideas about plants and that kind of thing, please let us know. Let Ron know. Ron, raise your hand. Ron is back here. He is our junior warden, and he's the one who's been sort of leading the charge on all of this. If you have ideas, please talk to him 
But take the time to walk back over there. Just follow the path, and you'll, you can't miss it. Um, it's, it's, it's not what we would uh, like. And one of the things that we're trying to do is improve our visibility. We had a wine walk on Friday night, a wonderful time again, not 317 people this month, but, but quite a few people. And more often than not, we hear people say, gosh, I've lived in Parker all my life. I didn't know this was a church. I didn't know this church was here. We have to do something about that. And we have to create better visibility, and that's a place we're hoping to start back there. So, um, so please think about that. In the fall, we don't have a date, but we're thinking about a work day, an outdoor work day, where we'll start putting all of that stuff in place. Lastly, I want to mention VBS. I want to mention our leaders first. Would you all please stand up? We don't have Whitney Tomlin with us. This was, thank you, lady. This was our first time since 2019. So it was, it was kind of a steep learning curve to figure it all out again. We had an amazing time. What was so incredible was that we had these wonderful Bible stories to teach the children. They knew the stories. They were teaching us the stories. It was so great. And we had more youth leaders than we had participants, I think. And we did. And our youth leaders loved it as well. And our, some of our kids are here with us today, and they have a song that they practiced all week long that has all kinds of motions that I can't do. But, um, <laughs> but I'm going to invite you guys to come up right now. Come on up, and leaders, and come stand up here. Come stand up on the altar so we can all see you. Are you going to turn something on? Oh, okay. Okay. It's not fair.
much to this group and, and uh, other children who participated in BBS. That was wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Are there any other announcements this morning? Birthdays and anniversaries. Do we have any of those to celebrate today? Yes. All right. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God. Eucharistic Prayer A can be found in your worship booklet. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thy name for a It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of life and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven. We forever sing this hymn. No, I'm sorry. Yes. We forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
loving, gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is alive. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Christ 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 we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, our Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit. Produce for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the glory of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power,
The worship is over. Now the service begins. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. color looks amazing on you. <laughs> oh, I can call it out. It was, it was not good. <laughs> it was sad that the babies got COVID. That was sad. Yeah, the one-year-old got it. Everybody's good. No, but he had real high fever, and that's all he had. And a cough. You do? Um, Oh, good. So my 
Oh, oh, good. That'd be a good discussion. Okay, good. Good. Thank you. Good morning, Dorothy. How are you doing? Did the kids enjoy VBS? Did they? They were so much fun to have. I, I was worried that Sarah might be too young, but she got right in the mix. She had a good time. Didn't you? You liked it. It always helps to have brother there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good to see you guys. Good morning. I don't know for you. What is it? I only know 25 letters of the alphabet. Oh. I don't know why. <laughs> I might remember that one too. <laughs> Thank you, I'm glad to be back. Good morning, Missy. You knew all the signs, all the dance things. I know, it was good. It was good. So Abby, end of July is when we're gonna do the training. Third, third week, I'll, I'll send out an announcement. Yeah. Sam, are you watching the game? You better. You must not have been cheering hard enough the other night. Oh. 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 Yes, of course. Hello, good to see you. Great to see you. Good to see you too. Oh, good. Okay, Gary, thank you. Hello. Oh. We we have any number from various churches sitting on top of dressers. You know? All Scott. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Oh, I'm good. I'm fine. Thank you. Hello, my dear. Thank you. You did all. You knew all of the. Wasn't it great? I love it too. You ran out. I was able to fulfill everybody. Yeah, but my bottle. Oh, never had that happen before. Oh, I always try to gauge, but it's. It's, hard. Hard. it's really hard because everybody pours differently. Yeah. Yeah. We need to do the one ounce pour. We need the little. We need the little. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you, Christine. I'm so glad that you are well now yeah. and you're yeah. back. I'm yeah. glad. Yeah. Good. I'm, I'm good. I'm okay. really good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Hello, good to see you again. Tell me your name again. Anne. Yes, my okay. Name, my name is Hagee. Hagee? Yes. Yeah, okay. H -E -Y. Okay. And um, I'm glad for your recovery. Thank you. And glad to be here today for, for Good. Service. I'm glad you were here today. Yes. I, you know, you, it was me looking at you that made me realize I need to say this table is open to all. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, um, yes, um, and I'm kind of with my Oh, good. Yeah, that was so, fun. Yes, it was wonderful. So, so, so it was wonderful. Good. Good. I'm glad I'm well, too. I yes. feel so good being back. I, I wanted to say to people, Jim.